Hello, um, and uh, welcome to my channel, um, Market Monk Picks on Twitter. And uh, this is my first YouTube video in a while, and I'm going to be starting a, a new series in which I'm going to review, review some of the tools on unusual whales and, and how I use those, uh, but focused on particular sectors. So I'm going to do one sector at a time, and uh, I'm going to show you how I go about uh, creating some, some watch lists in those sectors, um, how I calculate call and put triggers and, and just sort of my, my general approach because um, you know each sector has kind of its own its own character and some of the you know particular stocks that um, that I focus on each week. And my first one um, is going to cover basic materials. So um, so I want to take us take us through that. So um, okay, so let me um, kind of show you step step one here. Uh, if you use unusual whales, you are familiar with uh, with this page. This is just sort of the general general flow. Um, I have other videos that uh, that cover this and how to set up some you know some particular filters for that based on uh, you know minimum premiums and and lately I've kind of settled on. Uh, 20,000 is kind of a starting point and I'll, you know, go around and um, go from there. I, I go DTE range one to 120 days. And, uh, and I just kind of follow this throughout the day. Now, now this page, you're going to see, uh, there's obviously a lot of, a lot of tech on here. We had um, on Friday names like Baba just, you know, dropping these huge amounts and um, fairly, fairly bearish day overall. But um, but like I said, my particular focus here is is on is on basic materials. So where do I go to um, assess the kind of day that they had and the kind of days and, and weeks ahead that um, that they might have, whether whether bullish or or bearish. So um, so what I do for that, um, you go to the menu and I go to the options dashboard, and this is a tool. I don't know if you've use this before, but it's um, it's a really good way to sort of tighten your focus on what's going on in a particular particular sector. And, um, you know, when you get there, it's going to show you, let me just kind of show just as an example. So, um, so you get there and by default, it's just going to list all of the sectors. It's going to have ETFs there. So you're going to see SPY and Apple mostly dominating that list. So you hide index and ETF and you go into basic materials. And we'll start in the um, most, most bullish chains. So what's been happening lately in this sector is that you have some small mining stocks like HYMC and um, NA, NAK that uh, have been running really hard. You can see these are, uh, these are kind of smaller cap stocks and I'll, I'll get to that in a minute right now it's on it's on all caps so if i were to look this up i say well you know h h y m c um you know it looks pretty bullish uh i go here to volume there's more bullish volume than bearish volume same with premium some of these other ones uh same kind of deal so i, I go to the chart and i say okay is there is there something for me here and you know, obviously it was up, it was up 25%. And we go to the day chart and we can see this is just, um, you know, kind of in the stratosphere. And um, I, you know, wouldn't really have much interest in, in chasing that. If I, if I couldn't have caught kind of the initial move, I'm, you know, probably not gonna, not gonna go for that one. But sort of interesting to watch nonetheless. And, you know, you also might find that um, there are some, similar types of stocks trading at or around a dollar that are mining stocks that you might do some DD and, and research. But, um, you know, being that I'm looking to trade options mostly, you know, probably won't, won't do that. But, but in looking for, for a theme here on most bullish chains, like I said, I saw a lot of mining and, um, and then here's gold. Well, what I do then is I go in and I start to adjust by market cap. So what are some of the biggest ones doing? And um, so here I have FCX. So FCX has 
bullish premium 221k 9.4k for you know for 318 414 we can see that um, these are out of the money uh, 318 again 318 again and um, so that that looks kind of promising so those are a lot of bought calls and then we see puts here but these are actually sold puts mostly and i can tell that because the premium on them is is bullish and the volume's bullish so um, so on the, the the big category, FCX looks um, looks very promising. Well, what is FCX? Um, FCX is a copper, gold, and molybdenum stock, and um, those have been doing pretty well. Uh, gold pulled back a bit. So um, so where am I at on the chart here? Well, uh, we had this big upside move where it tested fifty dollars. It's pulled back. So this seems to potentially be in a zone where um, where it could push higher. It was a little bit down. And you can see here on my watch list, I do organize them by sector. So here's basic materials. Um, although uh, the uranium stocks recently were moved to energy. So I'll actually be talking about those in the energy section. But uh, OK, anyway, so here's FCX. All right, I can I can see you know where it's at on the the day chart, and um, it's kind of seems like it's it's bullish. There you know might be a nice pivot point here, so it's a name I'm interested in. So then I go into the actual um, the the comprehensive flow page, and I'll take a look at it here. And let's see. Okay, so um, just at glancing at it. Um, I have this set for the last seven days, and on Friday, um, looking very, very bullish in my filters here. I click on the chart, 73%, 89% on the, the premium, so that's good. And uh, so my overall impression of it is that it's bullish. Does that mean it's going to go up? Uh, not necessarily, but I think that um, it's more likely that it would. Is kind of what I'm after. Uh, so I might look to enter a trade on this, and I, um, you know, would get into, let's say, a five a five minute chart or a three minute chart. And um, on Friday, there weren't really a lot of opportunities there. I um, I don't know if you were trading Friday, but but we had this this big pre market pump in in most stocks based on some positive news on the Russia Ukraine war uh, that quickly faded for um, for most of them but um, one thing that I do like to do with material stocks if I'm if I'm bullish I, I will if I'm if I'm scalping it I'll, I'll try to look for kind of an over oversold point and a, a flush it open is often a good a good time to do that uh, but this on on Friday didn't offer really the best the best range this this would be a winning trade but um, you know, kind of looking for something different, maybe a you know a, a kind of sustained move, and um, that is where call triggers and put triggers come in. So let's um, let's take a look at that. All right. So this is my day chart. The way that I calculate call and put triggers um, is based on something I learned from. Uh, Adam Silver trades on Twitter, and I'll I'll put his link in my bio. And uh, it's a really uh, pretty straightforward method, and um, has served me pretty well. So I take what's called the um, the average true range, which is a a measure of um, the stock's kind of average movement. And, and I look at it. I'm on the day chart, so this is really important. So you get on the day chart, and you want to get the average true range. Uh, this is a free plugin called ATR. And um, so you go to indicators, you, you, you search for it, you click on that, and you get this, you get this graph here. And so what I'm interested in is um, I want the, the ATR number at its closing price on the previous day. So I go here and it looks like it's about 228. So you're, you're going to take that number and you're going to divide it by four, which um, 
I will do the calculator because I am an English professor and math is not my my thing. Um, all right, so two twenty. Ah, sorry, twenty four divided by four equals fifty six. All right, so fifty six is this is the number that is going to act as your call trigger and your put trigger. Um, but this number is just the first draft. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean in just a moment. So I'm going to add this for the call trigger for the 4693. And I, I don't use the um, after hours number. I, I use the closing price. 4693 plus 56 equals 4749. Okay, so 4749 is my initial call trigger. So what do I do then? Um, I want to see where 4749 lines up on the chart. And if it looks like a potential point of some you know, short-term support and, uh, and resistance. So I'm here on the hour chart. So 4749. Let's see what that does. All right, so I go here, and so at, at around 47.50, uh, we can see it does kind of match up to, to some candles here. And in particular, um, it made this big upside move here once it, once it crossed that. And then I could see that there's a number of candles that, um, and let me just add a, line here make it a little easier all right so 47 47 50 thereabouts um okay so what am i looking for here again i'm looking for moments where it seems to kind of test this line and then crosses over it and defends it and makes an upside move um, because that's that's what you're going to get with triggers you, you want to see them you know are they going to kind of retest and um, and then bounce and, and go higher. That's what that's what you're after. And um, on the hourly chart, it does definitely seem to do that. Um, I go to the 15 minute chart and you know look for you know a, a similar a similar kind of thing and um, it, di it did in fact make some moves up above that. And if I go kind of uh, further back, you can see how this line holds up. And um, it does seem to be a reasonably important level, approximately, where, uh, where you keep getting these breakthroughs and these bounces. And, um, and that's what you want in a call trigger. So let's take a look at the put trigger. Um, so I'll take this number, um, minus 46.5. Nine three minus forty six point nine three forty six thirty seven. Okay, so forty six thirty seven. Where does that where does that put us? All right, forty six. All right, so now I'm looking for where it breaks to the downside. And does that, does that actually occur? Well, um, you know, on the, on the hourly chart, it, it is a number that seems to be pretty close to an area where when it was trading lower, it was acting as a kind of resistance. So is it, is it, resistance that has become you know support um, that's kind of a question we can ask so we might we might go a little further out and um, again this is a stock it's been kind of in a melt up so we don't really have a whole lot of data to go by uh, we can see here that the times um, on the daily chart where it does go below here you get these long these long wicks that get rejected and it comes back out. So if it were to actually 
break below this and, and confirm that, um, this would potentially be a good, you know, a good put trigger. And, um, you know, what you're mainly after with this is you want it to, you want the stock, the reason you use these triggers is you want the stock to kind of break out of a range. And um, because within the range, there aren't really a lot of, a lot of trades there. And, um, you know, cause it just sort of is range bound and kind of bounces, uh, bounces back and forth. So you want it to break below that and really kind of um, confirm it and, and give you a, a pretty sustained downside move. Now, just based on the, the candles here, um, you know, I, I'd say this is pretty close. You could move it up a little if you wanted to, um, just to get into the kind of the full body of some of these, some of these candles. So you can kind of finesse these a bit. I might go to 46, 51 or, or something like that. Um, but, uh, but there we go. So that would be, those are, when you look, when you see my watch lists on Twitter, that's how I come up with these numbers. I take the average true range on the day chart and I look at its closing value, divide that number by four, and I add it to and subtract it from the price. And that, and that gives me my, uh, my triggers. And I will uh, write up some instructions on that, uh, on that as well. So there would, be, there would be FCX, basic material stock. Um, I might you know, watch list it. And, and the reason I came up with it again, is because it, it appears multiple times on this list. And um, it does have some you know, appearances to the downside as well, although not particularly as strong in terms of volume, although you do see some leaps that are sold calls at, at 50. Um, but, uh, but in any case, it's, it's getting a lot of volume. It's tending to be bullish just based on you know what I what I saw here with some of these orders on Friday uh, but if it does make a downside move I have that that call trigger and um, the way I play those there's uh, there's two ways that I, I use the triggers one is um, I look for a five minute candle to close over the trigger to kind of to confirm the direction you know I'll, I'll enter there. Um, the triggers also during the day, you, you can see retests. If I enter a trade and, um, or even if I don't, if the, if it just goes, flies past the trigger, I'll wait for it to come back. And if it holds that level, then I'll enter. And, uh, the last thing I do, which, which I'll talk about in a few future video is, um, I do have some automated orders based on the trigger, just when it, when it crosses that price, um, uh, E-Trade will just buy a few contracts and I will, um, you know, just uh, follow the trade from there. Um, something that, um, you know, for me helps if I have kind of bias about a stock. If I'm bullish on something, I might hesitate to enter puts, even though that was the better play that day because of market conditions or, or whatever. So, um, so I have a pretty good success rate with that. Um, it's really all it comes down to how how much you trust your um, your levels and kind of your your experience and, and your discipline for stop losses and and that kind of thing. But um, but I like the triggers because they do give me potential upside and, and downside scenarios, and um, they allow me to enter a trade with some level of conviction that uh, a move is going to going to continue. So if we scroll through some of the the smaller market caps, we can see, you know, what's coming up there. And this can give you a kind of impression of, of, um, of these stocks. You see CLF showing up on the bullish list a few times. Um, there's some downside uh, pressure too. And those in particular, the steel stocks, CLF and X have been, um, you know, running extremely, extremely hot. They certainly could um, continue to the upside, but uh, if you set triggers on them, you have a potential to catch those uh, downside moves for puts as well. Um, so I go to the mid caps, let's see, and there's X, like I mentioned, we get um, a lot of, uh, oh, light went out, excuse me. 
uh, we get a lot of volume on X on both sides. And um, so again, that's, that's another potential, uh, potential candidate here. It's been making some, some pretty big moves of more than 5% a couple of days last week. So um, we could see a continuation or, or a pullback in that direction. And I have seen a, quite a few gold stocks showing up. AUY is a, um, is a gold stock that I've been trading as a swing for quite some time. And you can see um, what it's been doing. It made this huge move, um, you know, kind of based on market conditions. And you see this with a lot of gold stocks where they were in this tight range and then they have recently broken out of it and uh, are kind of trying to find their, um, their footing at these higher levels. And we'll see if, if that curls and continues. Uh, but, you know, I can know that a sector has been relatively hot within basic materials and can have some idea that it's going to go further. But um, setting the triggers and, and following this process gives me um, an impression on whether or not, uh, you know, I should maybe follow through on that. When gold was in that initial run, you, so, you would have seen in this most bullish chains, it would have almost all been gold stocks, like 80% or, or something like that. So um, so I mostly on this page use the most bullish change and, and most bearish chains. I identify some tickers there and then I go through the, um, the flow and just sort of see where they were on, um, on Friday. So um, I might uh, lower the premium here, but you can see at close, there was some, a lot of bearish activity on gold. And if I go to some, I'm already at 20,000, but if I just go down to 10,000, um, adds a few more. So it had been just, you know, decidedly bullish all week. And then we did see some attention here uh, towards the bearish side. Gold has been running inverse the market a little bit um, as an inflation hedge and Kind of a flight to safety when when tech is down. So um, so that's something to watch there. If you trade metals, you also want to keep an eye on futures. And uh, for gold, uh, GC one in in particular. Um, and as you trade some of these other ones, you know there's copper and aluminum, et cetera, that you can look at. And uh, you trade oil, of course. CL one is one that you would look at too. Uh, I'll have the whole energy energy video later. Uh, but again, um, so that is, uh, that's kind of my, my process. Now, um, some other things on the option dashboard, you can get into what are the most active chains. Uh, you can find some, you know, some interesting, interesting things here, um, or sorry, most unusual, where you have this sold puts on MOS 1.1 million versus zero bearish. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, and then I might look at what else is going on with, with most. Um, so this isn't one I really trade that often, but kind of try to get an impression. And this is a, this is a chemical stock. And we can see this has been on kind of a melt up too. And, um, um, so seeing something like that might spark something for me, whether it be to enter Moss or Dow is actually the one I usually usually trade. So um, yeah, so if uh, Dow, I, you know, I know pretty well, if Dow can break, you know, 62 or so and, and hold that, it definitely could um, see some extension higher uh, to 65. If I was looking in, the strikes on it, I might go in and see, um, you know, is there anything happening here? 61, okay, that's, you know, potentially interesting. And I might extend that out and, and go into to leaps and, and see there too. Um, and you do actually have leap chains that you can look at. And so some of the more active leap chains, again, we see gold here. SBSW is a gold stock too. Um, mid caps, 
AUI. So there's more, there's more gold stocks. So in terms of leaps, I am seeing a lot of gold, uh, not entirely surprising. Uh, gold can move fairly slowly. So um, leaps are not a bad option there where you can just give it some, give it some time and, and some room. Um, these smaller caps, I like to get a lot of shares on those too. And uh, highest IV, um, something I tend to avoid. Uh, this is that mining stock I mentioned. You can see the IV on this chain is a uh, 500%, which is very high. Uh, you can see a more typical IV down here, 50, 60, et cetera. So um, implied volatility, it's a stock that's uh, just going crazy and um, is going to uh, pull back and can pull back very hard and create a lot of um, a lot of bag holders with that. Uh, but uh, okay, so basic materials. That is uh, where I come up with the um, the names to study, uh, and I talked about how I create watch lists based on average true range, and um, how I confirm things with kind of the, the general flow. So you can use these tools sort of in conjunction with each other. And, and that's what I really do. And so my, uh, my starting point almost every day in every sector is uh, to go to this options dashboard to see where some of the highest premium is, particularly in stocks that, um, that kind of meet my, meet my criteria. Um, volume on both sides is fine uh, because I do have put triggers as well. And um, in, in basic materials, lately, um, I, I do kind of look for a bullish setup first because that's been the trend in the sector. In tech, I might be looking for a bearish setup first because that that's the trend. Um, that's the trend there if we're in a if we're in a bear market. Um, but even within bear markets, you get these really uh, extreme upside rallies that happen. So you can uh, have those triggers ready and um, be prepared for that. And when I get to the tech video, um, I'll talk about that and, and show you some of that, uh, some of that as well. Uh, but this is my uh, my video on basic materials, and it's one of my favorite sectors to trade. A lot of the, you know the contracts um, at the money are, are fairly um, fairly cheap, and uh, I have had a lot of success with making triggers in these and uh, and seeing some um, some follow through on that. So I'm thrilled to be back on YouTube, and uh, I'll be releasing uh, one video for each. Uh, for each sector and you can see all the sectors listed here i'm just going to go in order so uh, communication services will um, will be next uh, one last piece of, of news um, i do have a uh, a new uh, discord room that uh, i started with a um, colleague of mine it goes by uh, 25 bees on um, on twitter 20 it's at 25 b e e z um, i'll put his put his name there and uh, our focus is on um, education and uh, collaboration between two different perspectives. Um, I mainly am, am looking at looking at option flow, and um, he is uh, on the the technical analysis side with a system he calls uh, Respect the Lines (RTL), and uh, our room's actually called RTL Academy. And uh, and again, our, our focus is on uh, you know teaching you both of these methods how they work together uh, to help you identify some of your own trades. Um, we do give alerts on this page as well. So um, the alerts are an extension of um, the education. My The stocks I alert all come out of this prep work that I do, um, these watch lists I create, and um, you know, an ability during the day to see some, um, to see some opportunities. But, um, but we don't just, we don't chase momentum. Uh, we are all about putting the, um, putting the work in, being prepared, knowing the stock that, that you're getting into, and uh, just uh, being able to adjust uh, to whatever the market uh, wants to throw at us. So I'll have a disc that Discord link uh, in my bio. And uh, lastly, uh, I am planning in April to do uh, market closing live streams. So uh, I am every day going to be on that, um, that last hour. And um, you know, just uh, to kind of take you through my process, look at what I'm looking at to close the day. I'll talk about any swings I'm going to enter and um, and why, and uh, just give you a, an impression of how I read that 
that late that late day flow. Um, I know, uh, you know, me, Kevin stopped his uh, his market closing live streams, uh, which I used to watch and really enjoy. So um, so my name's Kevin. I'm going to try to fill the Kevin gap here and uh, and provide uh, some of that as well. And so those will be those will be recorded. So um, so you'll see a lot of activity on my uh, my YouTube channel. Um, you know, now that uh, we have this new discord room, I, I would like this to be um, an extension of that. Uh, and if you do want a spot there, uh, we're going to limit it to 100 members so that we can uh, we can focus on a lot of one on one on one instruction so it doesn't it doesn't get too too big and um, we opened last week and we're about half full so um, so if you're interested uh, feel free to contact me and um, you know we we uh, likely will have a spot for you okay so uh, so thanks again uh, it's great to be back on YouTube uh, really appreciate all the support I've gotten and um, I'm happy to discuss uh, stocks with you at any time. If you have any questions, um, you can address those in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you and uh, have a great week, everyone.